Acadian Creoles or Cajuns are an ethnic group mainly living in the U.S. state of Louisiana, consisting of the descendants of Acadian exiles. While Lower Louisiana had been settled by French colonists since the early 17th century, the Cajuns trace their roots to the influx of Acadian settlers after the Great Expulsion from their homeland during the French and English hostilities prior to the Seven Years' War. The Acadia region to which modern Cajuns traced their origin consisted largely of what are now Nova Scotia and the other maritime provinces, plus parts of eastern Quebec and northern Maine. Since their establishment in Louisiana the Cajuns assimilated the colonial Louisiana French Choctaw Patois dialect and culture, known among them as Cajun French, and adopted many Creole folkways, adopted Zydeco as music, and cuisine. The old Creole parishes is heavily associated with them. Acadia, the origin of the designation Acadia is credited to the explorer Giovanni da Verrazzano, commissioned by the King Francis I of France who on his 16th century map applied the ancient Greek name Arcadia to the entire Atlantic coast north of Virginia. Arcadia derives from the Arcadia district in Greece which since classical antiquity had the extended meanings of refuge, or idyllic place. The Dictionary of Canadian Biography says, in the 17th century Champlain fixed its present orthography, with the R omitted, and W. F. Gainong has shown its gradual progress northwards, in a succession of maps, to its resting place in the Atlantic provinces. Ethnic group of national origin, the Cajuns adopted a unique dialect of the French language and numerous other cultural traits that distinguished them as an ethnic group. Cajuns were officially recognized by the U.S. government as a national ethnic group in 1980 per a discrimination lawsuit filed in federal district court. Presided over by Judge Edwin Hunter, the case, known as Roach v. Dresser Industries Valve and Instrument Division, hinged on the issue of the Kajan's ethnicity. We conclude that plaintiff is protected by Title VII's ban on national origin discrimination. The Louisiana Acadian is alive and well. He is upfront, and mainstream. He is not asking for any special treatment. By affording coverage under the National Origin Clause of Title VII he is afforded no special privilege. He is given only the same protection as those with English, Spanish, French, Iranian, Portuguese, Mexican, Italian, Irish, AL, Ancestors. History of Acadian Ancestors The British conquest of French Acadia happened in 1710. Over the next 45 years, the Acadians refused to sign an unconditional oath of allegiance to Britain. During this period, Acadians participated in various militia operations against the British and maintained vital supply lines to the French fortress of Lenisberg and Fort Bostia. During the French and Indian War, the British sought to neutralize the Acadian military threat and to interrupt their vital supply lines to Lenisberg by deporting Acadians from Acadia. During 1755 to 1763 Acadia consisted of parts of present-day Canada, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island and the Gasp Peninsula in the province of Quebec. The deportation of the Acadians has become known as the Great Upheaval or Le Grand Hour Copyright Arrangement. The Acadians' migration from Canada was spurred by the Treaty of Paris which ended the war. The treaty terms provided 18 months for unrestrained emigration. Many Acadians moved to the region of the Atacapa in present-day Louisiana, often traveling via the French colony of Saint-Domingue. Joseph Bruce had led the first group of 200 Acadians to arrive in Louisiana on February 27, 1765 aboard the Santo Domingo. On April 8, 1765, he was appointed militia captain and commander of the Acadians of the Attaca Pass region in St. Martinville. Some of the settlers wrote to their family scattered around the Atlantic to encourage them to join them at New Orleans. For example, Jean-Baptiste Sima, wrote to his father in France. My dear father. You can come here boldly with my dear mother and all the other Acadian families. They will always be better off than in France. There are neither duties nor taxes to pay and the more one works, the more one earns without doing harm to anyone. The Acadians were scattered throughout the eastern seaboard. Families were split and put on ships with different destinations. Many ended up west of the Mississippi River in what was then French-colonized Louisiana, 
including territory as far north as Dakota Territory. France had ceded the colony to Spain in 1762, prior to their defeat by Britain and two years before the first Acadians began settling in Louisiana. The interim French officials provided land and supplies to the new settlers. The Spanish governor, Bernardo de Garn Lvez, later proved to be hospitable, permitting the Acadians to continue to speak their language, practice their native religion, and otherwise pursue their livelihoods with minimal interference. Some families and individuals did travel north through the Louisiana Territory to set up homes as far north as Wisconsin. Cajuns fought in the American Revolution. Although they fought for Spanish General Galvez, their contribution to the winning of the war has been recognized. Galvez leaves New Orleans with an army of Spanish regulars and a Louisiana militia made up of 600 Cajun volunteers and captures the British strongholds of Fort Butte at Bayou Mancock, across from the Acadian settlement at St. Gabriel. And on September 21, they attack and capture Baton Rouge. A review of participating soldiers shows many common Cajun names among those who fought in the battles of Baton Rouge and West Florida. The Galvez chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution was formed in memory of those soldiers. The Acadians joining the fight against the British was partially a reaction to the British having evicted them from Acadia. The Spanish colonial government settled the earliest group of Acadian exiles west of New Orleans, in what is now south-central Louisiana a Euro an area known at the time as Atacabas, and later the center of the Acadiana region. As Brasso wrote, the oldest of the pioneer communities. Faust Point, was established near present-day La Riva by late June 1765. The Acadians shared the swamps, bayous and prairies with the Atacapa and Chittimacha Native American tribes. After the end of the American Revolutionary War, about 1,500 more Acadians arrived in New Orleans. About 3,000 Acadians had been deported to France during the Great Upheaval. In 1785 about 1,500 were authorized to emigrate to Louisiana, often to be reunited with their families, or because they could not settle in France. Living in a relatively isolated region until the early 20th century, Cajuns today are largely assimilated into the mainstream society and culture. Some Cajuns live in communities outside of Louisiana. Ethnic mixing and alternate origins not all Cajuns descend solely from Acadian exiles who settled in South Louisiana in the 18th century, as many have intermarried with other groups. Their members now include people with ancestry of British, Spanish, German, Italian, Native American, Ma copyrightists and French Creole settlers. Historian Carl A. Brasso asserted that it was this process of intermarriage that created the Cajuns in the first place. Non-Acadian French Creoles in rural areas welcomed Cajuns into their communities. Some Creole parishes, such as Evangeline and Avoyles, possess relatively few inhabitants of Acadian origin. Their populations descend in many cases from settlers who migrated to the region from Quebec, Mobile, or directly from France. It is generally acknowledged that Acadian influences are untraceable and have completely vanished. Many Cajuns have ancestors who were not French. Many of the original settlers in French Acadia were English, Irish, German, Greek, Spanish Canary Islanders, and Italian colonists who began to settle in Louisiana before and after the Louisiana Purchase, particularly on the German coast along the Mississippi River north of New Orleans. People of Latin American origin, a number of early Filipino settlers, known as Manilaman, from the annual cross-Pacific Galleon or Manila Galleon trade with neighboring Acapulco, Mexico, descendants of African-American slaves, and some Cuban-Americans have also settled along the Gulf Coast. Anglo-American settlers in the region often were assimilated into Cajun communities, especially those who arrived before the English language became predominant in southern Louisiana. One obvious result of this cultural mixture is the variety of surnames that are common among the Cajun population. Surnames of the original Acadian settlers have been augmented by French and non-French family names that have become part of Cajun communities. The spelling of many family names has changed over time, modern preservation and renewed connections. During the early part of the 20th century, attempts were made to suppress Cajun culture by measures such as forbidding the use of the Cajun French language in schools. 
after the Compulsory Education Act forced Cajun children to attend formal schools, American teachers threatened, punished, and sometimes beat their Cajun students in an attempt to force them to use English. During World War II, Cajuns often served as French interpreters for American forces in France. This helped to overcome prejudice. In 1968 the Organization of Council for the Development of French in Louisiana was founded to preserve the French language in Louisiana. Besides advocating for their legal rights, Cajuns also recovered ethnic pride and appreciation for their ancestry. Since the mid-1950s, Relations between the Cajuns of the U.S. Gulf Coast and Acadians in the Maritimes and New England have been renewed, forming an Acadian identity common to Louisiana, New England, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia. State Senator Dudley LeBlanc took a group of Cajuns to Nova Scotia in 1955 for the commemoration of the 200th anniversary of the expulsion. The Congress Mondial Acadian a large gathering of Acadians and Cajuns held every five years since 1994, is another example of continued unity. Sociologists Jacques Henry and Carl L. Bankston III have maintained that the preservation of Cajun ethnic identity is a result of the social class of Cajuns. During the 18th and 19th century, Cajuns came to be identified as the French-speaking rural people of southwestern Louisiana. Over the course of the 20th century, the descendants of these rural people became the working class of their region. This change in the social and economic circumstances of families in southwestern Louisiana created nostalgia for an idealized version of the past. Henry and Bankston point out that Cajun, or properly written as Cadin, which was formerly considered an insulting term used upon all of Louisiana's inhabitants, became a term of pride among Louisianans by the beginning of the 21st century. Culture. Geography. Geography had a strong correlation to Cajun lifestyles. Most Cajuns resided in Acadiana, originally known as the Creole parishes, where their descendants are still predominant. Cajun populations today are found also in the area southwest of New Orleans and scattered in areas adjacent to the French Louisiana region, such as to the north in Alexandria, Louisiana. Over the years, many Cajuns alongside the prominent Creoles, migrated to the Beaumont and Port Arthur area of southeast Texas, in especially large numbers as they followed oil-related jobs in the 1970s and 1980s, when oil companies moved jobs from Louisiana to Texas. However, the city of Lafayette is referred to as the heart of Acadiana, because of its location, and it is a major center of Louisiana Creole culture. Music Cajun music is evolved from its roots in the music of the French-speaking Catholics of Canada and the Creoles of southwest Louisiana. In earlier years the fiddle was the predominant instrument, but gradually the accordion has come to share the limelight due to the Cajun community's German influence. Cajun music gained national attention in 2007, when the Grammy Award for Best Zydeco or Cajun Music Album category was created. Cuisine Modern Cajun cooking is said to be a fusion of old Louisiana country creole tradition and Acadian influences, relabeled and powerfully mass marketed as Cajun, since 1971. Outside Louisiana, and even within, some food writers wish to distinguish between Cajun and Louisiana creole cuisine, maintaining that creole dishes tend to be more sophisticated and continental while Cajun food is rural and akin to peasant food. The Acadian Cajuns largely adopted the pre-Acadian cuisine of popular Creole dishes such as gumbo, jambalaya, and baudin. Creole cuisine tends to focus on local ingredients like locally available wild game, vegetables, and grain, which is where they remain distinctive, since many of these ingredients have never truly entered American mainstream cuisine and thus were available to displace local traditions. Since many Cajuns were farmers and not especially wealthy, they were known for not wasting any part of a butchered animal. They adopted Creole dishes such as cracklins, a popular snack made by frying pork skins or fat and bowden created from the ground up leftover parts of a hog after the best meat is taken, which is mixed with cooked rice. It is usually formed into a sausage, but can also be rolled in a ball and deep fried called a bowden ball. Language Colonial Louisiana French is a variety or dialect of the French language spoken primarily in the Acadiana region or the old Creole parishes of Louisiana. 
At one time there were as many as seven dialects spread across the Creole heartland. Recent documentation has been made of Cajun English, a French-influenced dialect of English spoken by all Louisianans either as a second language, in the case of the older members of the community, or as a first language among the young. Religious traditions, Cajuns are predominantly Roman Catholic. However, Protestant and Evangelical Christian denominations have made inroads among Cajuns, but not without controversy a euro many Cajuns will shun family members if they convert to any form of Protestantism because of the extreme persecution the Cajuns were subjected to by Protestants during the Great Expulsion of 1755, and throughout their history for maintaining their Catholicism. The 1992 cookbook, Who's Your Mama? Are You Catholic and Can You Make a Roux by Cajun chef Marcel Benvenu outlines long-standing beliefs that Cajun identity was rooted in community, cuisine, and very specifically, devout Roman Catholicism. Traditional Catholic religious observances such as Lent, and Holy Week are integral to many Cajun communities. Likewise, these traditional Catholic religious observances may further be understood from cultural Catholicism in Cajun Creole Louisiana by Marcia Gordit which tells us that such traditional religious observances, although they may not be strictly theological and liturgical forms, are still integral and necessary to many and remain religiously valid as unofficial religious customs and traditions are certainly a part of Roman Catholicism as it is practiced. Mardi Gras Mardi Gras is the day before Ash Wednesday, which marks the beginning of Lent, a 40-day period of fasting and reflection in preparation for Easter Sunday. Mardi Gras was historically a time to use up the foods that were not to be used during Lent, including fat, eggs, and meat. Mardi Gras celebrations in rural Acadiana are distinct from the more widely known celebrations in New Orleans and other metropolitan areas. A distinct feature of the Cajun adopted Creole celebration centers on the Cour de Mardi Gras. A group of people, usually on horseback and wearing capotins and traditional costumes, will approach a farmhouse and ask for something for the community gumbo pot. Often, the farmer or his wife will allow the riders to have a chicken, if they can catch it. The group then puts on a show, comically attempting to catch the chicken set out in a large open area. Songs are sung. Jokes are told, and skits are acted out. When the chicken is caught, it is added to the pot at the end of the day. The core held in the small town of Mama has become well known. Although such Creole practices were adopted by the Cajuns, some tried to make a connection with the observance of La Chandelier, or Candlemas, by Acadians in Nova Scotia. Easter, on Par Cent Ques, again called Par Cent K, or Par Cent K, Par Cent K was played. Contestants selected hard-boiled eggs, paired off, and tapped the eggs together a euro the player whose egg did not crack was declared the winner. This is an old European tradition that has survived in Acadia until today. Today Easter is still celebrated by Cajuns with the traditional game of pack, but is now also celebrated in the same fashion as Christians throughout the United States with candy-filled baskets, Easter bunny stories, dyed eggs, and Easter egg hunts. Folk beliefs. One folk custom is belief in a traitor, or native Creole healer, whose primary method of treatment involves the laying on of hands and of prayers. An important part of Creole folk religion, now observed by some Cajuns, the traitor is a faith healer who combines Catholic prayer and medicinal remedies to treat a variety of ailments, including earaches, toothaches, warts, tumors, angina, and bleeding. But one tradition that originates with the Akkadian descendants can be found in the Rue Garou, a version of a loop Garou, that will hunt down and kill Catholics that do not follow the rules of Lent. In some Cajun communities the loop Garou of legend have taken on an almost protective role. Children are warned that loop Garou can read souls, and that they only hunt and kill evil men and women and misbehaved horses. Celebrations and gatherings, Cajuns, along with other Creole parish Acadiana residents, have a reputation for a joie de vivre, in which hard work is appreciated as much as passing a good time. Community gatherings, in the culture, a coup de main is an occasion when a community gathers in order to assist one of their members with time-consuming or arduous tasks. Examples might include a barn raising, harvests, or assistance for the elderly or sick. Festivals 
The majority of Cajun-adopted Creole festivals include a fadu do or street dance, usually to a live local band. Crowds at these festivals can range from a few hundred to more than 100,000. Other festivals outside of Louisiana, in Texas, the Winnie Rice Festival and other celebrations often highlight the Cajun influence in southeast Texas. Major Cajun slash Creole Zydeco festivals are held annually in Rhode Island, which does not have a sizable Creole and Cajun population but is home to many Franco Americans of Quay copyright bar copyright qua and Acadian descent. It features Cajun culture and food, as well as authentic Louisiana musical acts both famous and unknown, drawing attendance not only from the strong Cajun slash Creole Zydeco music scene in Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York City and California, but from all over the world. In recent years the festival became so popular that there are now several such large summer festivals near the Connecticut-Rhode Island border, the Great Connecticut Cajun and Zydeco Music and Arts Festival, the Blast from the Bayou Cajun and Zydeco Festival, also in California the Cajun Zydeco Festival. Bay Area Ardenwood Historic Farm, Fmont, California and the Smee Valley Cajun, Creole Music Festival. Tributes. Documentary Films, Spend It All Director, Les Blank with Skip Jerson, The Good Times Are Killing Me, Hot Pepper Director, Les Blank, Jaya Permel Tar Copyright or Bal, by Les Blank, Chris Strakwitz and Maureen Gosling. Narrated by Barry Jean Ancelot and Michael Doucet. Louisiana French and Zydeco Music Documentary. Louisiana Story Director, Robert Flaherty. Further addressed in 2006 documentary Revisiting Flaherty's Louisiana Story, by a group at Louisiana State University. Film, Southern Comfort Director, Walter Hill, starring Powers Booth, Belize Near the Cajun Director, Glenn Piter, starring Armand DeSanti, Little Sheenia Director, Bethany Ashton, starring Jonathan Schleck, Literature, Eve Angeline. An epic poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow loosely based on the event surrounding the 1755 deportation. It became an American classic, and also contributed to a rebirth of Acadian identity in both Maritime Canada and in Louisiana. Bio Folk by Kate Chopin who wrote about the Creoles and Cajuns. Children's book author Mary Alice Fontenet wrote several volumes on Cajun culture and history. Acadian Waltz by Alexandria Worley wrote about the Cajun culture. Songs, Jambalaya a song credited to Hank Williams. Jambalaya is about life, parties and stereotypical food of Cajun cuisine. The music is taken from the Cajun song Grand Texas. Acadian Driftwood, a popular song based on the Acadian expulsion by Robbie Robertson that appeared on the band's album, Northern Lights, Southern Cross. Louisiana Man an autobiographical song written and performed by Doug Kershaw. It became the first song broadcast back to Earth from the Moon by the astronauts of Apollo 12. The song not only sold millions of copies but over the years has become the symbol of Cajun music. Jolie Blonde, lyrics and song history of the traditional Cajun waltz often referred to as the Cajun National Anthem. Mississippi Queen, 1970 song by Mountain about a Cajun woman visiting from Mississippi, Elvis Presley was a Cajun, a song from the 1991 Irish film The Commitments in which a two-piece band plays along to the lyric Elvis was a Cajun, he had a Cajun heart, Amos Moses, a song by Jerry Reed about a fictional one-armed alligator hunting Cajun man. Perfect Day, a song by Lady Antebellum starts off with a singer seeing a Cajun man with a red guitar singing on the side of the street, and throwing a handful of change in his beat-up case and saying play me a country beat. See also. Cajun cuisine, French American, French Canadians, Great Upheaval, List of Cajuns, References, Footnotes. Sources, Maria Hebert Later, Becoming Cajun, Becoming American, The Acadian in American Literature from Longfellow to James Lee Burke Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Louisiana State University Press, 2009. ISBN 978. 08071-3435-1. Dean Job, The Cajuns, A People's Story of Exile and Triumph, John Wiley and Sons, 2005, External Links, Acadian Memorial, Acadian Museum, Pamillionville Living History Museum, http, 
Digital Commons Way Needy the Content CGI? Article equals 1040 in context equals Humbiel preprints, HTTP, Arxiv org Arxiv 1312 1312.6639 PDF.